episode 29 is an episode that really didn't give us all that much to talk about, but it did highlight the deck evolution of Yudis' cards by giving him more Transic Rainmoo specific support cards. And I think the main takeaway from this episode though was the relationship building between Yudius and Gohart Yuna. After all, seeing Yuna in this episode generally did make me start to regain my love for this character, as she was able to shine in a non dueling way. Hello everyone and welcome to Dueling with Downton. And yes, I know it's been a while, but we're here to talk about episode 29 of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush anime series, and of course the other episodes moving forward in different videos. The main topic of discussion for this episode though, is most likely around Gohart Yuna. Because ultimately, the character of Genta, who was introduced in this episode, really was a nothing character. However, he might get one more appearance in the future, and I'll explain why and how later on. But for now, I want to talk about Gohart Yuna, as we've been wondering how Yudius would get his daughters back. Would he get an epic rematch in where the two would clash and Yudius would finally come out on top, thus winning the Duelist back? No. Instead, we return to a question that I had in my other reviews, in where, what if Rovian asked Gohar Yuna to give the Duelist back to Yudius? The answer, after a lot of pestering, Yuna would cave and give the Duelist back to Yudius, no questions asked. But not without showing her displeasure for doing so. It's clear that she's not ready to be all buddy-buddy with UTS, but herself and the Rovian bandits do seem more like allies now instead of enemies. This is obviously evident by the fact is that Yuna gave the Daughters back to Udius, and she was also showing concern for Udius during his duel as well, which again helps to prove that they are becoming more friendlier between each other. And without Rovian around, Yuna was able to shine in a non-dueling way. Yes, she still had some silly goofy faces throughout this episode, but so did the characters of UTS, so we can't blame her for that. Instead, she was not over the top, she was not in your face with her goo goo ga -ga ring for y Rovian. Instead, she displayed emotion and her personality, which I absolutely loved, and it started to allow me to enjoy the character and regain my love for her. Hopefully we can see, continue to see her involved in UTS's antics moving forward because honestly, I would love to see her connect and bond more because her on screen is just a delight, isn't it? Now earlier I said that Genta the Balanced Rock Boy might get a reappearance and although I hope I'm wrong in this, they did show a certain gem at the end of the episode and it gives a slight spotlight to him. I'm wondering if this strange rock is like the material the Rovian offered to Yuamu when she wanted to buy UTS's building. This gem has to be useful in the future slash has to have more meaning behind it because the design of this rock slash gem looks so interesting and intriguing there has to be more lore behind it. I will not stand for it if it's just a one-off item that never gets mentioned again. Although, saying that, it could just be something that Asaka could have, you know, given the balance boy to try and shut him up with all of his complaints, because, well, we know that Asaka has a lot of money, wealth, and rare items. So, again, it could not mean anything. But at the same time, it does make you wonder if it's connected slightly to the weird material that Rovian was trying to offer Yuamu when purchasing UTS. The character himself of Genta, I wasn't that fond of. You could tell that he wasn't anyone important when they first introduced him. They really did pile on the Fred Flintstones kind of primal theme behind the character and the references, which made him less serious and a bit too stereotyped in my opinion. However, I did like the playstyle of his deck in where he had weaker monsters and then they grew more powerful if you have a running number of level cards slash monsters on your field. For example, if you have a level one, a level two, and a level three monster, and then you'll be able to activate certain effects and abilities to gain more strength and power and resistance against your opponent. I really like this deck uh, playstyle, so you could say it's balanced. A. Hey. While on the topic of decks though, I did find the continuation of evolving Udyssey's deck and still keeping the main focus around Transic Rainamu with the trap cards and the spell card support, a really great thing. 
as it stays in line with Yudis' character because we learn in episode 1 that Transic Rainamu is a card that Yudis sees as the representation of himself. So we need to keep Rainamu around Yudis' main core of the deck so that he can feel like he's a brave warrior fighting on the battlefield alongside his monsters again. Also, it just does make that ace monster a bit more viable, a bit more powerful. And I can't wait to see Transic Rainamu get his own equip spell card in the future. I think that should be awesome. Now, obviously, a little bit of a um, interjection here. I have not seen all the episodes that have been released so far, but I have also seen a mechanic that is returning to Rush Duels in Go Rush. I've seen fusions. So, yeah, that's something to look forward to when I get around to those episodes. As for the other characters within this episode, there's not much to say about them. They were there just to basically fill up time and just to be there as a presence. Asaka, again, was showing off her recklessness and her wealth, which could make for an interesting storyline if she loses all of her money in the future. Hell, what if there is a story uh, line where we actually get revealed that Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens is set after the events of Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush. So, Mutaba Asaka is losing all of her family's money and fortune, while Yuna, with the bandits, is making a lot of money, thus leading to the rise of power of Goha and the fall of Mutaba, as we saw in Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens. I think that could be so much fun. Yumu kicking the stone card generally did make me laugh, but what is her foot made out of? Because she's able to shatter stone with just one kick. That's gonna hurt. Also, her reaction to Asaka's award for stopping the company, um, the complaint, sorry, was a classic Yumu behaviour. We know she likes to be a bit greedy. She knows she wants money, and yeah, I just love the sparkle in her eye when she saw the uh, opportunity that Asaka was presenting to her. So overall, this episode wasn't that special, but it did have a few good highlights slash elements about it. So hopefully moving forward, we'll get more plot heavy stuff happening and Yuna, who knows, maybe she can become a bit sweeter and a bit more friendly up with her main cast. Overall though, an okay episode. Thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed. If you have, hit like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And I suppose, have a great day. Alligator, Mandanet, goodbye.